Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Esper Zer Control. What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. I hope everybody is doing well today. I hope I'm able to keep uh, ahead on videos because I will be heading out of town actually the day after this video goes up. Uh, so if I do miss a day in the next you know, week or so, just be aware that I'm out of town. I'm doing the best I can to get it all ahead of time. Uh, but in case I miss a day, I just want to give you guys that heads up. Now, uh, as far as this deck goes, this is actually brought to you by Cairo, who is a fellow content creator, really nice guy. He's actually been featured on our channel uh, as part of our guest slot as well. I think he was our very first. Uh, but Cairo, thank you so much for sharing this list, my man. I really do appreciate it. This one is a fun one. Uh, so this is Esper Zer Control. It's basically built around Zer Eternal Schemer, one of the brand new cards out of Dominaria United, uh, which basically says enchantment creatures you control have death touch, lifelink, and hexproof. Uh, on top of that, you can pay one in a white and target non-aura enchantment you control becomes a creature in addition to its other types, and then of course has a base power and toughness equal to its mana value. Uh, what's so nice about this is there are a lot of good enchantments right now. Holy crap. Uh, one of the brand new ones is Leyline Binding. Gets cheaper for every basic land type you have represented on the battlefield, and it's an instant speed way uh, of basically exiling a non-land permanent an opponent can controls especially if we can make this a creature it's a 6-6 six, six naturally uh with the zur ability so huge huge powerful creature uh we do have temporary lockdown which is a great basically enchantment sweeper something a little bit different i'm really excited to play with this card because i think it's a really cool one uh, i think it's also really good in the current meta because you are going to see a lot of aggressive decks i think at the moment uh, we do of course have wedding announcement touch the spirit realm borrowed time all of which are in the deck for uh, removal pieces and touch or borrow time and then of course just filling up the board and powering out the board with wedding announcement. Uh, we do have a sweeper with Meat Hook Masker. Spirited Companion is naturally a creature already, so it's going to naturally get that Death Touch, Lifelink, Hexproof. Just amazing, amazing little uh, patterns there. Uh, we do have some interaction with Rona's Vortex. We've got a single cut down and then two Make Disappear, all of which are going to really help us out, of course. Uh, Katilda is in here to take advantage of all the enchantments that we are going to have on the battlefield, of course. Uh, and then Sarah Paragon is a really interesting one because it allows us to replay a lot of things from our graveyard. Uh, and then, of course, we got a lot of extra value out of this. So I'm really interested to actually play with the Paragon. I think it's going to be a fascinating card. I have played against it and holy crap. Uh, is it scary? <laughs> uh, so definitely a really good card here. You'll notice we've got some like off color, uh, in particular Xander's Lounge here. Uh, technically an off color Triland. The important thing here is that we are trying to represent a lot more than just our basic colors thanks to that ley line binding. Uh, obviously most of, well, I'll say two of the colors represented here are actually useful for us anyway, but the red is also just a way of uh, kind of cheapening up that ley line binding. This does count for three basic land types, so keeping in mind that one land cheapens this up by three and makes it a three drop, which is pretty amazing. So all that to say, guys, it's going to be a really interesting one. I do really like this deck, and again, thank you so much to Cairo for initially creating and sharing this list. Uh, I believe it was you, Cairo, that shared it, so I'll, I'll link that down below. But guys, let's jump right in. Let's see what we can do. Let's have some fun. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. How do we feel about this hand? Uh, it's a little tricky, uh, solely because we don't have double white or double black, uh, but we do have the wedding announcement. <sighs> mm. This is the only downside to having like off color lands is it makes it a little bit tricksy, uh, but I think we'll maybe try it and base off the based off of the wedding announcement, hopefully just drawing into more lands will solve this problem for us. Uh, we do have a fairly high number of three drops in the deck, uh, so this isn't overly um, surprising. Our opponent here is giving some serious thought to uh, to their hand here. We'll see what they actually come up with. Uh, guys, this is a good time to mention we do have our Dominaria United giveaway going on for one more week. September 16th is the final day for that. If you're interested in entering, one free way to do so is subscribing to the channel. Uh, there are three other free ways you can do so, which include 
following us on Instagram, on Twitter, and then of course joining our Discord. Links for all of those are down below, so I do encourage you, please, please, please check that out. Uh, it'd be hugely, hugely appreciated. Uh, let's go here. This opens up double white and double uh, black for us next turn. Uh, and chances are we're just going to Rona's Vortex on the uh, Virtuoso. Um, just to kind of slow them down a little bit here. Uh, yeah, I'm actually going to do this preemptively because I do want them to phase it out or do any kind of slip out the back maneuvers as they can now. Uh, and if they can't, great. Uh, just makes it easier for us. Perfect. That was really good, actually. Uh, so let's do this. I'm going to go ahead and borrow time on this. There we go. Uh, so my hope was that they were going to run a slip out the back uh, into that Virtuoso, and if they didn't, then that kind of cleared the path for us. So I'm pretty happy with that, actually. I'm not uh, upset at all by that. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's play you. Um, I think it's just wedding announcement, actually, here. Uh, we are kind of wanting to start spreading out here. I think we want to do that more so than anything else. Teferi who slows the sunset is a bit of an interesting play. I'm not overly concerned by it, though. Wow, for no value, they're going to run out the extraction specialist. Sounds good to me. Uh, okay, there's the plus one. Sure. Uh, that's fine. Do they have a backup play? <clears throat> Land. Okay. Spar's headquarters. Okay, so they are potentially running green in the deck. Uh, a lot of people are running these off-color lands for just the cycling, uh, which I do think is a relatively reasonable play, to be honest. I don't think that's bad at all. Um, so we can actually just run out the Meat Hook Massacre here. Uh, let's attack first. Let's just see. Whoops. Let's see what they do. Uh, if they block, fine. Uh, they could gain three or try and trade. They have to be concerned with what we might have there. Uh, obviously, that was a bit of a bluff, but that's fine. Uh, let's tap for one. What this allows us to do is also Spirited Companion this turn, though, uh, which I think is more important uh, because it does draw us further into the deck and it gives us later outs. So there we go. Uh, I think that was relatively good. Our, honestly, our biggest thing is keeping threats off of their side of the field. Given that they, we know what kind of deck they are. They're the the Azorius base uh, for like virtuosos. They've probably got a lot of instant speed little combat tricks. Don't really want to like give them that opportunity. So anytime they're tapped out, you do kind of want to take that opportunity to uh, make it difficult for them. We will say. Uh, interesting. Okay, uh, well then, first things first, I am going to send both of these here. Uh, okay, sure. That's honestly fine. I don't particularly care that much. Uh, they're using a Wandering Emperor on a token, basically, which doesn't feel all that important. Um, let's go ahead and Spirited Companion again, just to see what we draw first. Uh, okay. And then I will definitely just throw this out there. Um, this is going to draw us two cards. We're also going to flip one of these, which is really good. So now we've got much higher threats on the field. Uh, and then depending, of course, on what they play, we might be able to just kind of do some work next turn. So we'll see. I assume they're digging for quite a bit here, uh, given that they're minusing the Teferi in the face of all this. I feel like that's... Probably they just don't have a big threat in their hand. I say a big threat, just a general threat. <laughs> uh, sure. That's annoying, but truthfully not the end of the world, especially with that Sarah Paragon. Like, we kind of have the built-in answer. You know what I mean? Um, I will throw you out, I think. Uh... I think we just wedding announcement, honestly, and then potentially leave up just the make disappear. We're going to get two creatures out of this. Uh, so now we've got a way of casualtying this out if we'd like to, uh, just to make it a little more tricky for them. 
Uh, cool. I'm just gonna go ahead and make disappear on this. Uh, so this basically blanks their turn. They can minus on this to create a 2-2, two -two, but that's probably not gonna be that great. Um, and either way, we're gonna be able to remove whatever we need to remove. Okay. Feel pretty good about this. We've gotten a really good setup here. <laughs> So I'm happy about that. Uh, yeah, so let's bounce you. Uh, let's attack one here. Whoops. One here. This will get rid of both Planeswalkers. Um, and I'm going to throw out the Sarah Paragon only because I don't know that they're going to have another depopulate in hand. If they do, this is probably gonna suck. Uh, truthfully, this is probably a better wait and see kind of card, but uh, we do get to play a Spirited Companion here, which does draw us a card as well. So I feel like that's perfectly reasonable. We get a meat hook out of the deal. That's honestly not that bad. Uh, and here we actually get to, to draw quite a bit and we've got a lot of power on the field now. So basically what we're telling them is, hey, you probably are gonna need a depopulate, uh, otherwise, you know, it's going to be a bit of a rough matchup. Um, okay, let's attack first. Uh, totally anticipating they've got a Wandering Emperor. Maybe not. Nope, there it is. Okay, thought so. Uh, sure. Um, hmm. So we could bounce. Uh, and I think I will here. Just because uh, I kind of want to keep that on the field if I can. Uh, so let's go ahead and play Katilda here. It's a pretty big Katilda. <laughs> uh, there we go. And we get to draw some more. I mean, again, we have got a very substantial board. So that it's basically depopulate or bust for the opponent. Uh, and I kind of doubt they have it given they just minused on that. Uh, that's a pretty big tell. Um, cool. All right, uh, yeah, so we can kind of just start to go a little crazy here if we would like. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Um, truthfully, we didn't need Zer, as it turns out. Uh, I think we're doing okay without Zer. Uh, I think we can win this turn pretty reasonably. Okay. I'm only fighting this because I feel like, why not? You know what I mean? Sure, that's fine. <laughs> All of that fighting just for that. Um, that's fine. I mean, I think we just attack in and uh, they can block wherever they see fit. Um, cool. Still's going to die this turn and it still powers up our Katilda regardless. Uh, so we gain a lot of life out of the deal. Um, yeah. All right. Cool. Again, depopulator bust. Let's see what they've got. There it is. We did it, guys. That was perfect. We didn't really get to see Zer, of course, but we still got the win, and that was amazing. So let's jump into game two. This month's Patreon rewards features some of the most impactful lotuses in Magic's history. Check out all the details and sign up at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, here we are for our second game. Uh, that first one was absolutely perfect. I'm hoping we can get a repeat of that. This is a little bit more of a tricky hand. However, uh, any land really sets us up quite well. Again, keeping in mind, this Rafine's Tower takes this down by three, uh, which is a pretty substantial amount. It does make it a very nice little instant speed removal uh, option. And so I think we can maybe try it. It's going to be a little tricky if we don't draw a land, of course, that Shipwreck Marsh is uh, just going to come into play tapped if we can't play an untapped source on turn two, so it's a little awkward, but we'll we'll do the best we can. Uh, I do really love this deck so far. Um, I did practice with it just once or twice to kind of get, get a feel for it. Man, are the play patterns just phenomenal with this build, uh, and it's a not it's not a very expensive deck. Uh, in terms of like actual mana cost, I mean, Sarah Paragon is up there as four, and then technically Leyline Binding is six, but I mean, if you have any basic lands out, it will never be anything more than uh, five. And so, I, I, I don't know, it's just, it just, 
it feels really good and efficient. Um, I think there's something to this deck. I know there's also a few different builds with Xur, if I'm not mistaken, um, but I do think Esper is potentially just the most streamlined uh, because it does have everything it needs without too much frill, if that makes sense. Um, so let's see what the opponent is up to. We've got Shiba here. Again, playing a little slow, uh, but that's okay. Maybe it's my network. I doubt it. I think my network's fine. <laughs> I think it's, uh, I think opponents, yeah, they're playing a little slow here. Um, that's okay. Maybe they're thinking through. We do have a brand new format here, so let's, let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Uh, if they continue to play slow, I don't know, roast them. Um, <laughs> that's not nice. Don't do that. Uh, but I do hope they, uh, pick things up here. Maybe we can get a game three in if they do. We'll see. Kind of doubt it. Looks like they may have just completely disconnected. Ooh, hate when that happens. Really? Really? That sucks. I, I hate that for them. Um, if they just disconnected, this is going to be a very quick game. I'll include it. No, they didn't. Well, then, <laughs> what? Um, all right, whatever. Uh, they did miss their first land drop, so that's fine by me. And we are also missing our land drops, which is not ideal. Um, I actually think we pass here. Uh, we do have to discard a card. What is it going to be? That was bad, I guess, technically, wasn't it? Uh, it's probably borrowed time. No. It's actually, I think, wedding announcement. Uh, wedding announcement is... So, this is going to be a, uh, a, I assume, at least, a modified deck. Uh, and so I want to keep the counter spell because chances are we're going to be able to use it this turn. And I want to keep the removal pieces because that allows us to just completely deal with everything that they're trying to do. Uh, and if they just don't have anything, then we just win the game, basically. Uh, there's not a whole lot they can do about it. So we do need to hit a land drop, though. Technically, I think the right play would have been just to play Spirit and Companion last turn, uh, which we will do this turn and really hope to draw a land. Nope. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, at least we're both in the same boat here. That does make it better. Uh, of course, they do have this, which makes it a little worse. But, uh, that helps. Alright, uh, yeah. Let's just go ahead and do this. Um, easy enough. Uh, do we attack in? I think we actually do. Uh, solely because if they want to block, by all means let them. I really doubt they will. Uh, but if they're stuck on mana, they will run out of options here pretty quickly, so that's fine. Land. Nope. Okay. I'm just gonna borrow time here. And just keep removing their threats. I guess we'll pass this time, just so we don't lose too much. I'm not sure if that's correct to attack or not. Uh, my thought is they could just easily have, like, a fight spell, uh, and so I don't want to just run run into not taking extra damage on their end uh, just because we were trying to be defensive. But I do think we're obviously in a position where we kind of have to, so we'll see. Also, guys, we probably will only get the two games in. It looks like the opponent is playing super slow, so very sorry. Interesting that we both ended up in like a relatively similar position. Um, by the way, one one thing to note here, uh, we very easily could have just played Wedding Announcement last turn, uh, but these are their ramp spells, and if they're stuck on mana, I'd actually much rather be able to... Um, ooh, interesting. Uh, okay, I mean, we just take four, unfortunately. <laughs> nice. Um, let's see. So, uh, some of what I'm think like, part of me really just wants to throw out the wedding announcement so we can get somewhere with these. The other part of me is just, like, we could leave up Iganjo. I think it's just going to be this. We need to start developing our board. I am going to just throw this out as well. Uh, solely because we need to get some stuff on the board. They're doing a good job of putting some creatures onto the board, which are threatening. Uh, ours are much less threatening uh, until wedding announcement actually flips. So uh, I think we can save the the binding uh, for a later time um, because technically we could just double block and maybe trade here, but we'll see. We will see. 
The Ascendant Pack Leader. Little scary, but they don't have four mana yet. And I'm assuming they didn't draw four mana if they uh, are considering these options here, so that's fine. Okay. Yep, so we definitely just double block here and remove that. Uh, not really a big reason not to. Uh, we can just play Sarah Paragon at some point as well. That's like a pretty reasonable threat um, that they're going to probably have a hard time dealing with. Um, but now what we're setting up is a turn where we can Leyline Binding on the Yavamaya, whatever, um, and we're going to get a 1-1 out of the deal. So, like, we're, we should, theoretically, have quite a bit to do. Alternatively, now we can Zer and uh, attack up here, which I think I like better. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Let's get a big binding in. This is Death Touch, Lifelink, and Hexproof. I will 100% start attacking. Uh, we gain six life out of the deal, basically no matter what. So this is like a no brainer. Uh, the math isn't even close as of right now, uh, especially with them being stuck on mana. What's nice is again, next turn, um, we get another Leyline binding down if we want, and we can animate it right away as a blocker, but we also get the one one here. So like, we kind of have a lot. Wow, they actually just played Beseju. That's kind of interesting. Sure. That's good. Uh, it's not that good, uh, but sure. I'll just double block here. This is kind of an odd attack. I'm not really sure why they attacked like this, um, given they're only going to kill a 1-1 with it, but that's fine. All right. Uh, yeah, pretty straightforward, I think. Get this out of there. I will definitely wedding announcement again. Uh, and I think I just attack with this again, just to continue getting creatures on the board, I think is actually more important. And they're actually gonna start being two twos now. So uh, yeah, this seems better. Um, they also weren't technically anywhere close to transforming this. So I guess I didn't have to worry about it as much, but it seems fine. All right, let's see what the opponent's up to. Again, playing a little slow. This will definitely be our last game, but uh, there we go. We gain six, get two more creatures and flip, uh, which just means that we should be in a relatively safe position. Sure. That's all perfectly fine. Don't really care at all. <laughs> uh, do we just win with this? Uh, yeah, totally do. All right, so we do kill our own little things here. Um, I don't think it matters. <laughs> uh, we'll go for the cool points. There we go, guys. We did it. That was exactly what the deck was looking to do. Uh, that was an absolutely perfect uh, run with this. That was two games as well. Unfortunately, we don't have time for a third, guys, but let's go ahead and wrap this up. All right, guys, so two games, both were wins. Uh, and again, Cairo, thank you so much, my man, for sharing this video. Technically an undefeated run. I'm gonna mark it as such. If that pisses you off, so what? Uh, it's my channel. <laughs> I don't really care. Uh, I really enjoyed this. Uh, this deck is really sick. Again, I think the Esper version is probably gonna be where I land is the best version for this deck. That being said, uh, certainly this is skewed towards white. I'm curious to know what other builds there are with Xur, uh, because I think you can easily take this in a lot of different directions. That being said, Esper just seems streamlined. Uh, it seems really, really good. The removal package is amazing. Uh, and you get to kind of double up on plays a little bit easier because you've got long-term value with Wedding Announcement and with Xur. And then you've got really big board impact removal that turns into creatures thanks to Xur. Uh, and of course, things like the binding and etc. So all that to say, fantastic deck. Really enjoyed this one. Cairo, I can't thank you enough, my man. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy your weekend. Again, I will be out for the next week. I'm going to try my best to pre-record as much as I can, uh, but if I do miss any days, I apologize. Please stay tuned. John will, of course, uh, be on here, so thank you so much, John, as well. Uh, love you guys very much. I hope you have a fantastic day. I'll see you again soon.